Welcome back to the Vernon House Behind the Wall series with the Newport Restoration Foundation. For this video, we're in Salem, Massachusetts with our paint conservator, Christine Thompson, at her paint studio. And we are going to learn about how she takes a microscopic look at the history of the Vernon House. So my part in this historic structures report is to produce a paint history of the Vernon House. I have a tiny little chisel and I chisel away a little, just a tiny chunk of paint that's really no bigger than at the most a quarter of an inch across. Here's all the Vernon House samples you can see here, arranged room by room. We have lots of little bags. These are brought back to the lab. Then I have to prepare them and mount them to look at under the microscope. I have this little ice tray here and I pour uh, polyester resin into these little cubes and then I sand them um, on the sander so that I cut through the face of the cube to expose and now it's in cross-section. And what we end up with are all these little cubes. And I usually use a drop of um, liquid to put on there. Oh, here it is right here. To saturate the surface. The visible light um, gives us a good rendition of what colors are there um, and what sorts of paint treatments, um, but the UV light provides a little bit more information sometimes and it also t tells us certain pigments and certain um, types of um, resins fluoresce in a very particular way. What I see in the microscope is this, room 201 upstairs, which is the northwest chamber. We found the earliest paint treatment is a very bright green. And I've actually done a mock-up to recreate that look. And that was the color green that it would have been when it was new. And then after that, we went through a long period of white, 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 um, where these, some of these whites may have been pigmented. They may have had like a tan tone to them or maybe a, even sometimes a, a taupe or greenish tone. And then at the very top, we get into the modern paints. And the modern paints in this case are these two layers of blue. We also use ultraviolet light to look at the samples as well. And sometimes ultraviolet light can tell us things that we don't see in the visible light. And certain pigments have a very distinctly fluorescence color. These kind of yellow colors down here, that's the typical of what you see with lead-based paints. And then we start moving up and we start seeing these sort of sparkly bluish layers. And that's typical of zinc white based paint. All this information gathered um, by looking through the microscope is then laid out in a chart. Well, paint investigation um, has a number of roles that it plays in the uh, understanding of a historic building. Uh, most commonly, and people mostly think of using it when they ask the question, well, what color do I paint this room? What was the original color or, or, or at some particular point in time? So that's certainly an important function of it. Another one, a much more important one in a way that I like to use paint investigation is in an archeological way. You can compare this element to this element. This has five layers, this has 25 layers. Obviously, uh, it's not original. And so in an archaeological way, paint investigation can be very, very helpful. It doesn't give us an absolute date, but it provides us a relative uh, sequencing. Southeast dining room, let's look at that. And this has all been stripped, but nobody stripped these plinth blocks here. And when I took a sample from them, I found this. This is a close-up of the stratigraphy. It's only the bottom layers. And here's the first generation here. It's a cream base color, and then it has a black baseboard paint on it. But that's generation one. Generation two is this kind of tan layer. But you know what this is here? This is gold leaf. 
all these little flakes. Um, and it's hard to see in this photo, but if you look at it under the microscope, they sparkle. This was a pretty fancy room at one point. In decorative arts, in, in, in interior design and so forth, the aesthetics of taste uh, over time, we can see how it changed. It's very important that Myron and I communicate my findings to him and his findings to me. And we can see um, where, what information is clear and what information it might be missing. And it helps us to solve a lot of the questions that we have about how these rooms evolved over time. Thank you for following along and to our funders who have supported this project.